This conference will now be recorded. We're all here. The time being 4.45 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting of January 21st, 2021 to order. Before we get started, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noises will interfere with the meeting. As chair of the Tilton Select Board, due to the COVID-19 coronavirus crisis, in accordance with Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, pursuant to Executive Order 2020-04, this board is authorized to meet electronically, and these reasons shall be reflected in the minutes. Please note, there's no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to the meeting which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. However, in accordance with the emergency order, this is to confirm that A, we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone. Members of the public wishing to attend this meeting electronically may call the following conference call number at 1-866-899-4679. The access code is 817. 026-717, followed by the pound key. Additional public access by video or other electronic means will be available as follows. We are using the GoToMeeting platform for this electronic meeting. All members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if necessary, participate remotely using your smartphone, tablet, or computer at global.gotomeet.me slash town of Tilton slash selectmen. This information can also be found on our website at tiltonnh.org under meeting schedule and agendas. Um, C, we are providing public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. We previously gave notice to the public of how to access the meeting via telephone, conference, and by GoToMeeting, and the instructions are provided on the town website at tiltonnh.org and at the town kiosk. D. We are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting that a member of the public wishes to speak or be recognized during any public comment or public hearing. If you're a member of the public listening in and have questions, please write your questions down and at the end of each agenda item, I will ask if there are any questions from the public before we move on to the next agenda item. Please state your name and address and then ask your question. E, we are providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anybody has a problem, please email web at tiltonnh.org, which will be monitored during the meeting. F, we will adjourn the meeting if the public is unable to access the meeting. In the event the public is unable to access the meeting, we will adjoin the meeting and have it rescheduled at that time. Please note that all votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. Let's by, start by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their presence, also please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under the right to know law. Given the unusual circumstances, we will dispense with the Pledge of Allegiance. Selectman Scanlon. Present. Uh, I am by myself. Selectman Constantino. Uh, Constantino is present. Uh, I have one other in the room, and there should be one other soon to come. Thank you. Selectman Fogg. Fogg present. Currently one of two dogs with me. Uh, I'm Selectman Jessman, and I am alone. Uh, Selectman Pyra. Selectman Pyra here, one in the house, one more to arrive momentarily. 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I bring the uh, minutes of January 14th, 2021 to the floor for discussion. Are there any corrections, comments, or changes? Mr. Chair, we just got these minutes today and I have, I've been in meetings all day. I haven't had a chance to read them. Okay, based on that, I would uh, say we will put the minutes off until the next meeting and take them up then. Without objection? Seeing none. Uh, Chief Cormier. Chief Cormier, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair Joe. Um, so I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to uh, address the board. I wish I wish I could meet with you guys in person for this, um, but unfortunately with the pandemic, I know this is the only option. Um, but I, um, I got the, the phone call back in December of 2007 that um, I was selected to be the police chief in Tilton. And uh, over the last uh, 13 years, 14, in my 40s now, um, I've, I've had the pleasure to make some of the, the best friends I've ever made in my life and, and in, uh, also to watch some of the best police officers in my career grow and learn and, and become incredible officers for the town of Tilton. And it's been um, an incredible journey. I, I've enjoyed it immensely, but uh, this year I turned 60 and uh, I also hit my 39th year in law enforcement. And I told myself that uh, before I turned 60, I would uh, transition to my next chapter. And I had several goals when I took over as a chief. Uh, that was to, to try and bring the best training I could to the officers so that they would do a, be able to do a phenomenal job putting your cases together for you, um, to make sure they had the tools like Cellbrite and the polygraph machine and all the other things that they use out there to put cases together. And, um, and my last goal was to make sure they got a new police station. And um, with your help, we will make that dream become a reality. And um, I think it's going to be the nicest police station in the state. Um, maybe not the biggest, but it'll be the nicest. Um, but I, um, I just wanted to say to the board uh, that um, at this time, talking it over with my family and, and Jen, my wife is on the call with us, um, that I've made the, the decision to retire uh, moving into next month. And I wanted to give the board notice. And I also wanted to say thank you to all of you. Um, and you as well, Kevin, I know you're on the call. Um, all of you guys have become friends with me over the years, not just bosses, but my friends. And you've, you've really helped me grow and you've made it a pleasure to be here as your chief. And we've had so much fun and so much, so many laughs with all the events we've done, Joe, Tilton Diner cruise nights and, um, you know, movies in the park and all the different things that we've done on the island. Um, it's a lot of great memories, and um, I, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be great memories without all of you. Um, I've, and I hope that after I move on to my next chapter, that we all stay in touch. And you know, anything I can do for any of you guys in the town of Tilton, I'll always be there for you. And um, I'm going to miss you all, Chief. Thank you very much. Um, I regret that this is happening, but I really thank you for all the stuff that you've done for the town of Tilton over the last 14 years. Uh, you will be missed. Anybody else? I do. I want to. I want to thank you, Chief, for all the years of dedication to our town and PD. Um, I certainly wish you well in your new journey ahead. I, I don't feel like I need to say goodbye because you're a dear friend, always will be. Um, and I'm sure our paths will meet again. Thank you. It's been an honor serving with you. Thank you, Pat. And thank you, Joe.
Chief, I wanna, Chief, I want to thank you for your 13 years of service and what you've done to bring the Tilton PD forward from when you are to where we are now. It's been a big improvement. Uh, it'll be a big loss, but I'm glad to see you're looking at future endeavors and a new chapter. Sometimes that's the best thing uh, for us. But thank you again for your service. Thank you, Peter. Kevin? Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's kind of tough here. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the things is when people think of Tilton, a lot of times they think of you. Uh, you've become the face of Tilton um, across the state, um, serving on the chief of police with every, with uh, that. That was a great honor of having them select our little town, but our chief that's well known um, and uh, done a lot for not just Tilton, but the whole area, the drug enforcement, um, all the wonderful things for the kids and the disabled kids and um, just all the community, a, a great community representative. I've always been proud to have you as our chief and um, representing us in all those different faces and duties. Um, so I hope we'll uh, we'll stay in touch. And uh, well. thank you very much. Th thank you, John. Eric. Um. Well, I, I I have the least time with you as a selectman, and know you more as a private citizen and, and uh, as a friend. And uh, I thank you for all your hard work to the town of Tilton. Um, I'm glad that you're gonna retire for before you're too old, and you can go out and do things and and have fun with your with your wife because I know uh, I know where her favorite winery is now. <laughs> and uh, I will see you there uh, more frequently, and not just from a a Facebook post that you're I'm a day late and a dollar short. Um, but thank you for everything that you've done for this town, um, and, and uh, I wish you I wish you well from the bottom of my heart. Thank uh, you. Thank you, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, I would like to say thank you to Jennifer. I know how hard it is to be the spouse of a police officer, especially this particular police officer, no doubt. And you've been a, a great support to him and, and uh, you've helped us all. So thank you very much. I did all that. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Pat. Um, it is it is hard. Um... <laughs> I just want to say um, a huge thanks to all of you. Um, I know um, I'm super proud of Bob as well. Um, he has served the town so well. <laughs> um, I think <laughs> you would be um, really hard pressed to find um, a more dedicated and um, hardworking and, uh, you know, public servant. Um, I don't think that there's anybody, um, anybody else in this state that really um, has the knowledge and experience um, that you have, Bob. And I'm just, um, <laughs> I'm so proud. Uh, to be at your side. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, and you know that means he'll be around the house more, right? <laughs> oh, she I, hadn't thought I of that. Know. <laughs> you know, Bob. Bob is a true Rolling Stone. He gathers no moss. Um, he follows his passions, and um, you know, with with great vigor and uh he puts himself 120 percent into anything he does with you know with love and i expect nothing left less of him in his next chapter i know it's going to be um 
a really exciting um, continuation of all that he has done to this point um, in his career. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I don't know. I, we'll see if he stays around the house. I <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. But I'm, I'm super proud of him. I'm really happy for him and excited. I think this is, um, this is going to be um, a really great future for him going forward. And he'll have many opportunities to, um, you know, to draw on his uh, lifetime of experience in law enforcement. Well, thank you. Thank you ever so much. And yep. once again, thank you, Chief. Chairman. I think. Yes, Pat. Hi. Hey, Bobby. Get over here. Hey, Bobby. It's Jane. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do without yeah. my best buddy. I'm going we'll to miss still you. get lunch. Trust me, Jane. I'm going to miss you terribly. I'm going to miss you, you too. You've been wonderful for the town of Tilton. You've been a real asset, and you're going to be deeply missed. I Thank you. <laughs> I uh, I love all you guys. And, um, we love you. you. Know, I'll, be there. I'll, I'll be there for you guys for anything you need. Love you, Bobby. Okay. Uh, I won't belabor this any longer, um, but we need to move on. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you ever so much. Uh, next up on our agenda is the Director of Public Works, Kevin Duval. And Kevin, you have a trash collection proposal for us? Well, I presented it last week. I was hoping that you would take a look at it and, and hopefully we could come up with um, uh, some decisions tonight, whether to go forward with a Warren article or, or to make some other, other choices. Okay. Um, has everybody had the chance to thoroughly go over the proposal? Looks I like a we, yes. I thought we had some questions and, and um, uh, Kevin was going to get back to us on a couple of the questions. Am I wrong in saying that or no? Um, I remember there were, there were questions and we were going to look over the proposal and uh, discuss it again this evening. Um, uh, I Pat, that. would you like? To, do you have uh, questions at this time for Kevin? I I just thought we were going to get a little bit more information on the on the truck, and there was questions about um, the pickup um, scheduling, and I think that you didn't know some of the answers on the scheduling. You were going to find out from Panad on what the scheduling would be whether we needed one person or so I I, go ahead so what well, one of the uh, if kevin if you don't mind uh, i was just okay. going to say so one of the things that you had asked was to check into the contract which tim uh i don't know if he's on, on the call uh or if he's yeah there he is um and i don't think he's well i'll let him speak for himself uh, no I, I do have some information uh so I did uh, talk to Pinard. A, um, uh, there is a provision in our current agreement for a, a one-year extension. However, uh, and either party can uh, can explain that they don't want to extend it uh, with 30 days notice. Uh, and he told me that he would not be able to honor the same terms uh, because right now he's paying $140 a ton to Casella for recycling disposal and uh, charging us $50 a ton. So he has somewhere around a $90 differential uh, on our recycling tonnage, which is about 30 tons a month. So, uh, so in any event, we, we discussed uh, what the terms would be like and um, uh, he is willing to do an extension. More than likely, it would uh, be with some adjustments. Uh, so maybe a slight increase in the cost uh, similar to what he's done in the prior years, a 2% increase. Um, and then uh, with the caveat that the recycling would be at uh, a max of $145 a ton is what he told me. And uh, with the understanding that there are, I guess, um, 
there are, there may be some other municipalities that are not uh, diverting their recycling from solid waste facilities at this time. So we are tipping at $71.14 solid waste. Um, so th that's the differential. So we'd be looking at an increase of about uh, $25,000 over what we're uh, spending now at a, a max of $145. So the way the contract would work though is if recycling you know, prices came back, the market came back, that uh, if if they're then tipping at $100, we'd be charged $100. If it went down to 70, we'd be charged 70, that sort of thing. So the bottom line is uh, they're willing to do an extension um, with some negotiation on that. And then also uh, he would like to be able to offer his yellow bins uh, to people in town, uh, which was discussed before. Uh, but I believe at the time uh, we held fast with the plastic bags, selling the plastic bags to people and having them bring their trash uh, for those that couldn't do uh, curbside uh, collection to the um, transfer station. So anyway, those are the two things that he'd like to um, well, open up again. But one of the other questions that were that was asked last week is what about the trash bins? Do we owe owe own them and what would be the cost of replacing them if we didn't own them in the proposal Kevin's proposal yeah so the the uh, we do not own the the majority of the black bins but we we own about um, we own about a hundred and sixty of them of the black bins we own all of the blue green bins all the casella bins we own all those and um, uh, the the cost is, uh, I believe it's $75 a tote uh, for the size that we've been buying, uh, which is 95 gallons. He did tell me that most municipalities uh, require fewer, you know, a smaller bin size, like a 65 gallon as opposed to a 95 gallon. He, so he said, you know, we're kind of unusual in that. But um, he also pointed to the fact that uh, Franklin uh, is going to Pinard for now, their their collection. And um, and then the other thing was that if if we were to look at cutting out recycling altogether or making some type of big change like that, um, that uh, if they were still doing the solid waste collection, uh, they'd have to reprice that based on uh, the number of, um, the, they essentially work it out to an hourly cost of the truck and the number of lifts that they do. So it would depend on our our ordinance, how many bins that we uh, provide people, um, you know, and if that would be enforced, you know, so on and so forth. So I told him to focus just on, you know, the existing agreement um, for the time being, unless the board wanted to look at other options with that. But uh, bottom line is they're willing to extend. There would just be some caveats to that. And, and we would put that into the 2022 budget. John, you know, one of the questions I had last week was um, if we were to, uh, let's say, um, give Gisela an opportunity to bid on what we would be providing, and I believe we're providing, if we were to do it, um, to not have um, the recycling, could they provide us with a number um, very quickly? I'm, no, I'm, what would they cost us to do it without recycling? Because I think that's what our plan you would be. You talking about Casella, Pinard, or to go out uh, to bid? Uh, Pinard. Pinard. Uh, yeah, so it, uh, it's, it's not uh, as simple as half of what we're paying now. Um, there's a formula. Uh, he described it to me over the phone. Uh, I've been trying to get a hold of him. We spoke late this afternoon, so I didn't even have a chance to talk to Kevin or Jeannie about this. Um, so the uh, but essentially the way they work it out is they look at the number of hours that they spend doing the collection, and it's roughly uh, $300,000 of collection costs per 50 hours of collecting, so uh, on average. 
So if it takes 50 hours to collect a town uh, on average a week, it's uh, $300,000. So we're, and, and if you calculate the number of hours he quoted me for Tilton, we're somewhere in that 35, 36 hours a week. Uh, it works out to be just right around where his contract is. Um, so it kind of kind of fits the formula that he had. But in any case, he said that he would have to reprice that and that the big determining factor of doing solid waste only would be what our ordinance would be to, uh, you know, uh, because it, it part of what they do is not only the, the hours, but also the number of lifts that they have to do. So if you're going to permit um, two bins per um, per residence, or if you're going to, you know, restrict them, or you know, whatever that ordinance is going to be, that would have a determining factor in his price, is what he told me. So I'd probably we'd probably need to get more information on that. Um, but if the board would like to pursue solid waste only, I could certainly pursue that with him and see what those determining factors would be. Thank you, Tim. How about you, Peter? Tim, what does Pernard currently pay for trash disposal? You said the recycle is 145 or 150 a ton? Yeah, he told me this afternoon that he's paying $140 a ton for recycling disposal at Casella. And primarily because the further you get away from the main centers in Massachusetts, the more expensive it is. Um, our tipping fee for solid waste at Wheel of Brader is seventy-one dollars and fourteen cents. Uh, Can I ask a stupid question? Even though it's recycled, why isn't it going to Panacook? And we and they they're not doing that and saving seventy bucks. Well, uh, we're I bet paying you that's what's happening. He's telling you what the price is, but I don't. I don't bet you he's doing it. Well, so the so we're being charged fifty dollars per ton. I, I I understand, but when he was telling you about the 140 I think that's a line well, I you know I, I would have no way of knowing the only thing I can tell you is that uh, it did sound as though uh, maybe some other municipality has diverted their uh, recycling until such time the market improves mm -hmm. so um, you know but uh, yeah, who knows but in any case we, we're doing about on average about 30 ton of recycling a month so about 360 ton a year um so an idea but we've been paying 50 under the contract a max of 50. eric just just so i understand properly what if we do it on our on our own are we doing recycling and curbside pickup or is it just one one that's yet to be decided, Eric. I'd like to know the cost that it's going to cost us if we do it on our own. And what, what if any improvements need to be made to our facility at the highway department? And what will that cost us? Kevin, oh, if, if, do you have any ideas? If we start storing or collecting materials will have to spend a considerable amount of money to upgrade our facility to handle such stuff so right now it would be it would be a transfer station where the stuff is collected in the truck and then immediately brought to the facility to dump it whether it be casella or wheel abrader um it's it's not completely out of the question, I mean, we can pro we can pursue that transfer station idea, but um, the the truck situation would be a pickup and deliver in the same day. We're not storing it, so we're, whatever we decide to do with the recycling, um, it would be whatever that cost is that day for tipping, whether it be the one hundred and forty at Casella or or we bring it to Wheelabrator and we pay seventy dollars a ton to. to or the set the whatever it is to, to dump it at wheel abrader. Um so that I think that's where we're at right now. It it would just be in the truck for a day and then and then brought to a facility and dumped. Okay. Um, Peter, 
Peter, you have other questions? Peter? You're muted, buddy. It gave, gave me time for it to come back. If you want voter support, I don't care if you do recycle or not, but I would use the recycle bin every other week as the extra trash so that you're allowed the same quantity as we currently are, but send it all for trash at 70, don't pay the 140. So can, can I say something? Please sure. do. Okay, so this week I, I did do some extra research on the truck. I reached out to Nashua and to um, Goffstown. I spoke to a Jeff LaFleur of Nashua. He's a solid waste supervisor, and they've been running automated trucks for a while now. Actually, I think it's from 2003. And he actually um, made me aware of another cost when it comes to the maintenance of the truck. And if you think of every time that lift arm picks up a barrel in town, that's that's a movement. So they're doing, and I reached out to um, Cindy today to see how many residents there are in town, just to get a rough idea. And she said that she sent out 2,500 tax bills this year. So if we go with that number, 2,500 residents, okay, that's that lift arm is is operating 2500 times a, a week so we're looking at significant amount of use of that lift arm which is the the heart of the truck without the lift arm the truck is useless so when i spoke to jeff in nashua he said that they're doing either a a partial or a complete overhaul on that lift arm every year depending on the condition of the bearings and, and, and bushings and hose, hoses, things of that nature. And we'd be looking at fifteen to $20,000 to service that lift arm on a yearly basis. So with that information, it's it's cutting into our 40000 or $50,000 savings by going to a trash truck than what we currently have now. I, I just thought it was important to... to share that information before we go making a decision to, to buy a trash truck. Peter? Kevin, do we know if there's only one manufacturer of those lift arms or are there others where you have a heavy duty versus a medium versus lightweight? There are different manufacturers of, of, of those components, yes. I don't know if there's, you know, if there, if Nashua is using a Chevrolet instead of a Cadillac where you'd get an extra year or so, and, yeah, they, they. I did ask that question, and they run Mac chassis with the heel or high heel uh, body, which is what I had quoted. So it, that that would be comparable. Okay. John. John, do you have questions? How many uh, lifts did Nashua say they do a week in each truck? Um, <laughs> they they do about. 1,500 lifts per truck per each week, and they run three trucks. To give you an idea, when I ran a truck in in, in uh, Laconia, I would I would do 33 tons of trash each day. So the amount of recycling that we do in a month here, I would pull in in Laconia in one day, and if they were to do um, an automated system, it, it is faster, but you'd be looking at the, the roughly 3,000 lift per week. Um, so it, it is comparable to obviously the, the size of the, the, the town. Um, the number 2,500 lifts, that was based on the tax information I got from Cindy. Obviously, it might be a little more, it might be a little less, because some tax cards have more, more than one home on it. No. I just wanted are to get any a, of those an are idea. any of those tax cards for businesses? No, I spec I specified residents. <laughs> that has her hand so, up. Oh. Go ahead. Thank you. It sounds to me 
that we still have a lot of questions going on and there's still a lot of unanswered questions. My question to the board is that could we or would it be in the best interest of the town of Tilton to create a uh, committee or a group that's going to research this further so that we have all our ducks in order so that when we go to town meeting in a year from now, extend Panad in a year from now, have all our ducks, whether or not we want to ditch recycling, whether or not we want to keep recycling, and whether or not we want to get a truck and do it on our own for the difference of forty or 50000 It sounds like me that that's dwindled down to now 30000 So if you remember, this is a very volatile question that comes up and that it has come up over the years at town meeting, and we've spent hours and hours at town meeting. So we're not, it doesn't look like five of us have the answers, would it? And we don't have only a couple weeks to get the answers, not even a couple weeks. Are we going to be prepared to put this on a warrant? My thinking is the answer to that is no. I would propose that we extend our contract with Pennard for one year, that we I can't believe I'm saying this. Discontinue recycling and add that to our MSW to be brought to the incinerator in Pentecook. And uh, that we form a committee. Um, Kevin, um, several selectmen, people from the community. Uh, to see where does our trash go? How are we going to do it in 2022? Jeannie's had her hand up for a while, Joe. Jeannie, I don't get all the pictures, so speak up. Go ahead, Jeannie. So, um, <clears throat> wow, you guys are amazing. <laughs> um, one of the things we started in 2021 is the department heads um, just the department heads are meeting on a, a monthly basis right now <clears throat> through um, town meeting, and then we'll meet on a quarterly basis. We had our first meeting a uh, day or two ago, and every department head got to talk about the challenges that are facing them, uh, projects, that sort of thing. We had this discussion about trash and uh, the trash proposal. And we kind of actually came up with what Pat was talking about, which is um, we need to do a study. This is too important to the town of Tilton to spend the kind of money to find out we're going down the wrong road. There's a lot of questions. I think there needs to be an analysis done on uh, which way we should go, what the savings are going to be, what does it mean for our employees, uh, that sort of thing. So. I guess that's just my long-winded answer way of saying that I agree with Pat and Joe um, that the team talked about this just a day or two ago, and um, we think that's what we would recommend to the board. Thank you, Jeannie. Kevin? Yes, uh, um, I should add, today I reached out to NRRA and asked if they would do a study, our solid waste study for the town of Tilton. They said that they don't offer that service right now, but she did put me in touch with somebody at New Hampshire DES. I'm just waiting to hear back from New Hampshire DES on the cost for them to come in and do an analysis of our facility to see what we what would what we would need for equipment and in, in uh, property things of that nature, so that we could if we decided to go forward with the transfer station we would have that information. So I, I just wanted to let you know, I do have those phone calls out there and I'm trying to collect that information. Thank you, Kevin. Tim, can you tell me when the contract needs to be extended by? Uh, well, it ends uh, 1231 of 21. So, um, so your opportunity uh, to do anything differently on a warrant would be at this town meeting. Uh, we would have to sign a contract before the end of the year. Um, 
you know, for 2022, um, you know, some type of agreement, uh, whether it be an extension, a new agreement, or uh, a different, um, you know, vendor, something like that. So. I think we should put it into a motion that we um, create a meet, uh, create a uh, trash task force to study or and uh, make an analysis of uh, our trash and including truck and truck proposals and recycling versus trash or a combination of both. Or just one, and um, to present it, uh, the committee to present it to the board of selectmen prior to our budget talks in what August September, and then we go ahead with a year extension for Panad until we can get this onto the warrant article in next year of March. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion. May I? Yeah. I believe for the last uh, six months or so, Selectman Scanlon and I have been asking for a plan. So now with no time left, we decide we're going to put together a plan. So we punted another year, that's all. It's, we seem to keep punting, missing deadlines. Uh, Selectman Fogg, it would seem as though the contract isn't up until the 31st of December of this year. So we haven't actually punted. Yeah, we have, Where? Joe. We can, we can end terminate the contract at, based on voter town meeting. So if the voters in March said yes and we're a go on such and such a date, Pennard gets notification that the voting body has decided to end the contract. So we've just waited it extra year. We could have been ready point. for this year. That's my point. Point well taken. John. Um, part of uh, Selectman Constantino's motion was to um, voting to extend the contract for a year. Um, do we need to extend it for a full year because it, it's valid until December, so we would only want to um, extend it for month to month or for six months or something like that? How does that work, Tim? I guess it would be uh, up to us to try to negotiate whatever the board would want. I, I think... I, I would sort of recommend at this point, um, uh, you know, getting as much information from Tony, seeing if you want to go out to bid at the same time uh, or stick with Bernard. And then, um, um, you know, just if, if the board wishes to have a shorter term contract, I'm sure something could be worked out. But uh, just keep in mind that uh, you'd be going through town meeting and you need some sort of, um, uh, you know, ramp up time following town meeting to get equipment you would need or, or you know go whichever direction the 2022 warrant um, indicated so so you're talking tim about question to tim is that so you're talking that what if it got approved at march 2022 we would need time to acquire if it passed acquire a truck if that would be the wish of the legislative body and get that all in place correct tim uh yes i mean there'd be some sort of um mobilization uh needed i would think uh yep. you know sometime good. i mean we could be prepared for it but um um, and you know this was the plan that we were working through was either to go um, extend do a new contract or uh, to do this in-house and so uh, but I, I think it personally I think it makes a lot of sense to to um, considering how interested people are and Tony went through a whole um, discussion of what it costs 
citizens, if you think about, there's, he, he said that we have 1,500 uh, stops in town, and that uh, with those, it works out to be about $4 per week per stop, uh, according to him. Eric? Kevin, how long does it, is the turnaround on a truck? Um, from the time that we order it, it's three to four months. You would actually have to probably, if you if it got approved at town meeting next year, you'd actually have to go into the summer before you have the truck on site. Exactly. Okay. Jeannie, do you have any input? No, I, as I, just what I said before, which is, I think this is a, <clears throat> I think this is important decision for the town. And I think you need to do, or we need to do a fuller analysis of this uh, before the town moves forward. I appreciate, you know, what Peter said. I know that John was asking for it, um, the information and, um, all I can say is there's a lot going on at Town Hall right now, so we're doing the best we can do to get you the information that you're looking for, and um, I, I, we're just not there yet. Thank you. John, you have other questions? No, I, I just, you know, that was the only one was, do we need to get into a one more year contract um, after December? or should we do a six month or um, some type of contract month by month where we could uh, cancel it? Okay, Jeannie, do you have the uh, motion written down? I don't, but it's recorded. Okay. Uh, is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Roll call vote. Scanlon? Yes. Constantino? Constantino, yes. Fogg? Fogg? Is he there? Oh, I think he just dropped off. He's showing green. I don't show yeah. him on my screen. Well, uh, we'll jump to Jessamine, who is a yes. Pyra? Pyra, yes. Peter, are you back? He's coming back. Peter. Hold on. Okay. There you go. He's back. Peter? Peter, are you in favor of the motion? Fog, yes. I missed half the of it. The motion is unanimous. The motion passes. Thank you very much, Kevin. I'm sure you'll be hearing more about this. Okay. Uh, next up on our agenda is the town moderator uh, about the 2021 town meeting and business meeting, the voting and business meeting. Is Mr. Mitchell on the line? Okay, he's not here yet. I see a CM. He's online. Mr. Yeah, Mr. He is Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. But he may he may have stepped away because he's not due till, till six, six o'clock. So you could go on yeah you could go on to the selectman's reports. We'll or, do. Or no, let's just do Selectman's report. When Mr. Mitchell comes on, we'll skip to Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Selectman Scanlon, you have something for us today? Sure. Yeah. Um, I've been uh, up at the uh, new PD. I want to say that the workmanship and that it, they're doing a very good job um everything seems to be going pretty smoothly um there's um you know i'm, I'm sure there's punch lists and that of things that but that's typical so uh 
that's about it. Um, there were a couple things that I I noticed, um, and maybe Tim, you can uh, take note of this. The in the armory room, the door stop is on the wall, which is behind the long gun rack. So they would have to put in a door stop on the floor so that when the gun the uh, door swings open, it does not hit the guns. Okay. Um, the other thing was is I heard some discussion on a, uh, a gun cleaning room um, that was formerly the um, uniform room where the uniforms were hung. Um, one of my concerns is is that that's just plain sheetrock around that room and where they would be cleaning guns and the adjacent offices in, include the uh, prosecutor, the supervisor, and the um, um, I, what do you call it, the patrol room where they have uh, desks to do stuff as well as the administrative area. And I have safety concerns that um, um, based on past uh, knowledge that there is the opportunity or uh, unfortunate opportunity of a gun going off while cleaning a weapon that could be uh, a serious safety issue. The other thing is is um, flammable liquids that are used in the room um, to clean guns um, that, you know, explosion proof or fire uh, suppression for that. So I, I'd like us to um, carefully think about the safety issues of that before we change the layout of the building for a uh, gun cleaning room in there. The next thing is the um, budget meeting was last night and uh, I'll tell you this budget committee has gone through everything so meticulously and uh, as a selectman I'm proud to say that they approved the numbers that we put in for all of the municipal numbers from all of the departments and that um, they were um, happy with that and those numbers they are aware that there will be some changes. Um, They're made aware of um, uh, that uh, previously we had some uh, officer, a officer and a um, dispatcher leave, and that numbers would be changed for that. So they're uh, they're hoping that they will go down. <laughs> and uh, that's about it for me. Okay. Uh... Mr. Mitchell, are you there? Selectman Constantino, would you like to go next? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a couple of items in there, both in non-public, so you can just go ahead and um, I'll take them up then. Okay, thank you very much. Selectman Fogg. Peter? Hey, Chuck, it's Jamie Forrester. Hey, I see that you're on, and I just wanted to let you know, because I'm guessing you stepped away, um, that we're early. So if, uh, if you wanted to come on, um, you could do it first. Can you hear me? I can now. First, I would not put Mr. Mitchell on until 6 o'clock unless we're not going to go by our agendas. If the public wants to hear him, they're going to miss it if we put him on now. I, I have nothing to report in public. Thank you. Okay. Um, I would like to say that the 2020 municipal parking stickers are expired. So this is a reminder that now's the time to get your 2021 municipal parking stickers. Due to COVID-19, you need to call the police department directly to make an appointment to get your sticker. For those listening, the direct line to the police department is 286-827. No, it's 286-8207. Uh, January 20th through the 29th is filing for town elected positions. The town clerk will have the declaration of candidacy applications online and will be posting on Facebook. 
In-person submissions can be done by making an appointment. If you have any questions, please call the town clerk's office directly at 286-4521, extension 104. Selectman Pyra, you have a report? I do. Uh, first, um, it was nice to see parking enforcement in action on Main Street yesterday afternoon. Um, so that was nice. And uh, last night, we had a commissioner's meeting for the fire district. And just to put on our radar, this would probably be more for Tim. Um, it looks like Northfield is going to try to pull out of Lakes Region Mutual Fire Aid next year, uh, which would have an effect on us. Uh, they want the district, to, the fire district itself, to be the member, um, which may have a negative result on our tax rate. And the, Eric, the Eric, commission is probably going to want to meet with both boards of selectmen uh, in April or May. Pat? Eric, is that for 2021 uh, warrant article coming up, or is that the following year? Uh, originally, it was gonna. They were gonna try for this year, uh, but they are gonna do it for. It looks like for 2022. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Is that it, Eric? That's it. Short and sweet. Joe. Yes, Jeannie. Um, if you have, if you can't see, Chuck Mitchell is now on and ready to go. If you wanted to take him. I kind of agree with Peter's point. I, I guess I didn't hear it. I, I kind of I agree with Peter's point was that on the agenda, Mr. Mitchell isn't due till 6 p.m. And anybody who had wanted to come online to hear what Mr. Mitchell has to say would be expecting at six. And if we got him in and out of here prior to that, they'd miss it all together. I'm not sure what we do for 2018 minutes, but there you have it. I have a question. Pat? Did we, did we select a dedication to the town report yet? I don't believe we have, but I have a suggestion. All, well, do we, we, do we say that out front? How do we do that virtually? We can't. We have to do it non-pub, I guess. Yeah. We can wait until the non-public session for that. You can so, either do that or you can chat with selected individuals that are on the screen. Don't hit everyone if you don't want everyone. Oh, Jeannie's got her hand up. Jeannie? Uh, just a different, <clears throat> different topic. I did call Chuck to let him know, and I think... I was calling him when Peter made that comment. So now that Chuck is on, Chuck, I hope you don't mind waiting till six o'clock if you heard those comments. Can you hear me all right? Yep. Okay. Are you, uh, are you okay to wait till six o'clock? Sure. I mean, sure. It's, only it's only time. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I, I can certainly, while I didn't have a, a formal report to give to you all tonight, I do have some items I could fill in the gap until it's time for Chuck to come on if you want. Sure. Okay. So the first thing is I sent you all a copy of the draft warrant article for Bittern Lane. Uh, did everyone get that? Yes. And Chris Swinnerant, Swinnerant, I'm I'm butchering your name, Chris. I think you're still on. I don't see you. Are you there? I guess he jumped off. He's um, on. So he, uh, one of the questions. So that's that's uh, the two warrant articles for you to look at. We can discuss tonight, or you can look at it, and we can come back next week because I have one, at least one more warrant article for you to look at, and that's the repurposing of the, um, uh, it's a, house, a warrant article, housekeeping article on repurposing the Island Capital Reserve Fund by changing the name. So if that works for you, why don't we just wait till next week? You have time to look at the warrant articles and we can discuss it next week. <clears throat> um, 
but um, Peter had asked at the last meeting about easements, I believe, and, and Chris was going to look into it. And he did send me an email back and said, there are multiple easements to abutting owners to use the sewer lines that run through our property, uh, but nothing in favor of the water company. We're happy to give that easement, though, as, though, as part of the process. And then he had attached their most recent plan that he has, if that helps in any way. And um, we can send that to you to look at with the Warren articles, and we can discuss it next week, if that's what the board would like to do. Yes, please. Okay. Yep. Is that is everyone good with that? Yes, I am. John okay. is. All yeah, right. is. Thank you. All right. Uh, just a reminder: we've rescheduled the check presentation with Paul Gaudet to this Saturday at three o'clock at the new police department. Um, I also wanted to talk to you about transportation alternatives program. This is a program uh, sponsored by the New Hampshire DOT. They're in their fourth round. It's something that uh, I mentioned to you earlier that our department heads are meeting. We had a discussion about this uh, yesterday as well. It's um, they provide funding to towns the minimum is 400,000 up to 1.2 million with an 80% or excuse me, an 80% match. So the town would be expected to fund the 20% match. And in talking with the group, we thought it might be nice to uh, file a letter of interest. I would do that um, to create safe pedestrian crossing from park to park is what we're calling it. So from Tilton Island Park to Riverfront Park um, that would improve our sidewalks, help us with street lighting, which is something we've all been talking about since I've been here. And um, I would create an application to see if that might be accepted by a DOT. So I just kind of wanted to put that in front of you as an idea um, and see what you thought. I Amy. like it. Peter had his hand up. Yeah, Peter, go ahead. Jimmy, would you consider extending it up to uh, all the way up East Main since we've that's been the big problem areas in the last few months with the fatals? Well, that... Uh, Sure, and that's I guess that's one of the reasons I'm bringing it up to hear what your feedback would be. And, and part of that also, what I would envision with that grant would be that safe crosswalks and maybe even as we go up to Riverfront Park, try to address that across from Winter Street. Yes. But yes, absolutely the other way. Um, I mean, all they can do is say no, but I'd like to put together a, a grant application and see if it goes anywhere. And I wouldn't John? envision. I, sorry, I wouldn't envision that that would be something that would happen in 2021. It'd probably be in 2022. Right. I mean, it, in terms of getting the money. Yeah. John. No, I. I well, I was going to just bring up that same thing. It would be nice to uh, finally get uh, some type of safe crossing from the. Um, Waterfront Park over to where the Soldiers Monument is to continue as Jeannie just stated. Great. Anybody else? Um, Jeannie? Um, yeah, okay, good. So the other item I had was to let you know that I did testify this morning for Senate Bill 30, Tilton Island Park. Uh, that went very well. I've talked to the Senate president, and I've got a call into the speaker, uh, folks that I know to see about making sure this thing gets fast tracked so that um, it passes uh, through the legislature before town meeting. And um, Northfield had somebody testify, Senator Guida uh, testified, uh, Juliet Harvey Bullia testified. Uh, they all did a really nice job. 
So, and I talked to the chair of the committee and the vice chair to make sure, you know, to see if they had any concerns to make sure everything was going to go well. So I think that's headed in the right direction. Um, and then the last thing that I have is I did talk to Senator Guida about Califf Hill Road. Uh, he, and I uh, have also talked to the majority leader and the, um, the Senate president about getting that funded. Um, it's been a long time uh, to get that road fixed. And one of the things that Tim checked on was there was a bond, uh, a warrant for a bond in 2014, I think that was Tim, that has since expired. So uh, but, um, Senator Guide is getting me the information about, because it was the bonded amount 500,000, Tim? Because that's what Senator Guide seemed to think it was. But to, he's getting me the information for the funds that we want to bond. He's gonna confirm, and in fact, he called me today, but I haven't called him back yet, I've been too busy. So the point is, is, and I don't think we'd get the money until 2022, but it's something we might wanna consider is uh, refreshing that bond, that warrant article this year to be ready. Um, if when the money comes through that we can get this done. So that was the other issue. Okay. So is that something you're interested in? Me, yeah. Yes. Peter? Yes. Yes. Okay, there you go. That's all I got. Unless anyone has questions for me. Is there any member of the public who is listening in? I know there's several of you out there that has questions for uh, Jeannie Forrester or any of the selectmen. Tim? Uh, I don't have a question, Joe, but I did want to just bring up one thing uh, right. before six o'clock, if you, if you have a minute. Uh, I just wanted to let you know as as uh, we're getting close to the bond uh, for the new, um, you know, for the, the long-term bond for the police station, that um, uh, the closing is going to take place after we have completed the project. And right now it's, it's pushing out a little further into February uh, for that bond closing. And therefore, we're going to have bond interest that I'm going to have to add to the um, the operating budget for January and uh, partial February. So that's, I don't have the exact amount right now. Uh, that's going to have to be added and I want to go through that and make sure I got a good number to put in. But uh, I did want to alert you to that. So um, it does look like, um, like the closing would be towards the end of the uh, third week probably of the month. Okay, thank you very much. Is there any other business to come before us? Are you um, out there, Catherine? Joe, I just, ahead. if I could just say one other thing, I did, um, did want to mention that, I think I mentioned that um, Juliet Harvey Boya, who is, you know, is a representative now. Um, just wanted to mention too that much like Senator Guider, she's she's also out there watching out for the town of Tilton and looking for opportunities for the town. She uh, actually did call me as well about the the TAP grant to bring it to my attention, although I, I was aware of it. But I appreciate I appreciate that uh, she just like Senator Guider are looking out uh, for the town and opportunities where we can um, get funding to help our projects get done. So that's all else I want to say. I'm just curious, did uh, Representative Lang reach out to you, Jeannie? No. Huh. Is there anybody else? Uh, John? Yes. And there's Julia now. 
Um, but anyway, so on Saturday I um, had stopped down to take a look at the uh, the statue for the making the uh, base with um, Walter Nudd, who's going to be getting in touch with Kevin. While I was there, I had the opportunity to observe what Kevin was going through to replace a water pump. Um, any of you that work on cars, typically a water pump's a pretty straightforward, easy thing to do. Um, it's a little more complicated um, nowadays than before, but still it's a very common and uh, simple process, but not on our interceptors. So I, when I arrived, the interceptor was up on the left, and on the floor underneath it, meticulously laid out, I must say, by Kevin, was the engine, the whole subframe, the suspension, all the tires, everything had to be taken off in order to replace a very simple part. Um, I, After seeing that and knowing that typically water pumps get replaced, um, you know, they'll, they'll go anywhere from 50 to 100,000 miles. You're going to have to do them typically. And uh, I think we may want to reconsider um, our purchasing of what type of police car and uh, go by our mechanic's uh, recommendation, have him uh, give us some recommendations um, to go by since he'll be the one who's uh, having to go through all this to replace a part that's very inexpensive and simple. Peter might know something about this too. Peter? Peter? Am I off? No. Peter? No, he's, he's shaking his head no. He's always, okay. now he's off. All right, I see it now. I see it now. Okay. Uh, you're not well, having crap this tonight, so I'm in and out, so it may take me okay. 10 minutes to click on. That's why I've dropped right. out two or three times. I'm good. Okay. Well, here we go. Uh, it's 557, and call me a rebel, but uh, <laughs> Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Chairman, um, as a member of the public, may I comment on the last discussion on police vehicles? Absolutely. Just as a member of the public, I would also recommend when you're looking at police vehicles and makes and models, not just the repairs, but uh, mindful that the components that you have to put in the police vehicle will matter. So if you buy a vehicle that's not designed for those components, you may end up paying extra, just as a footnote. And this is Helen Hanks I'm talking to? Yes, it is. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Yeah, because it says Catherine Dawson. Well, she's here too. Hello. Hi. Hi. All right, it's like old home day. Um, I just wanted to, I didn't want to mention it I don't think I mentioned it in the, um, the call. The, with the, the, the waiver part, with, with, we, we're, we're, on the, it, we're on the mic. Mute. I took care of it. Okay, we're back in business. And the time being 5.59. Mr. Mitchell, you have the floor. Can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. Um. One of the things that is, but there's a lot happening right now. There's a Senate Bill 2, which is has nothing to do with becoming an SB2 town, uh, which is, uh, there's some dialogue on tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning with the Election Law Committee, which has to do with the pre-processing of ballots and also would enable a town to be able to postpone its uh both elections and deliberative sessions until the second Tuesday in either April, May, June, or July. I'm sure Tim likes that idea. At any rate, uh, let me tell you what, uh, I've been meeting with uh, two of my assistant moderators, both Catherine and Helen, and we have looked at a lot of different options. And so I'm gonna read some things and following the meeting, if anybody wants a copy of my notes, I'll be glad to send it along as the PDF file. Basically, the town of Chilton right now has only two options. And uh, we have permission right now to use the full gymnasium on March 
the 9th for the election and March 13th, the date of the deliberative session. Just to give you an idea of the number of people which has been in voting, which, who have voted in the past, I've got some data which I've uh, accumulated at least over the last four years. Uh, in 2017, now this is voting only, there were 341 in 18, 255 in 2019, 260 and in 2020, 258. Now this is voting at, uh, for the town elections. And that turns out to be an average of about 278 voters. And of course, this was prior to the real big issues dealing with COVID-19. And as far as the deliberative session goes in 2017, we had 90 people. 2018, we had 69. 2019, we had 102. And in 2020, 105. And so you can see that the number of 102 and 105 were the years that we dealt with the purchase of the land and also the, the uh, uh, police station. But prior to that, you can see the numbers were really quite low. And there's been an average uh, over those years of approximately 90 people. That's including the last two of about 90 people who would attend the, uh, the deliberative session. But out of the two options, so the first option is to hold the town meeting as previously scheduled or as we would we'd normally schedule on Tuesday, March 9th. And I personally feel that this is viable and uh, because we were able to successfully hold the elections in both September and November. And in those two elections, we had like 1,200 and 1,500 voters and we were still able to do it successfully. I think we can also go forward with holding the town meeting or the deliberative session on Saturday, March 13th, utilizing the entire gym. And with this way, we have, we have worked out a way which we could probably uh, section off an area across the back of the gym uh, for people who would might show up who were not wearing a mask. And um, I have been able to successfully satisfy, I believe, the school district with regard to an entrance for those folks that would not have them intermingling with the rest of the people. But also just as a side note, um, in the September election, I think we had six people who only six people who, who chose not to wear a mask. And at the November election, only about 10 or 11 who chose not to wear a mask. And several of those were, as you, we know, for health reasons. And then we had a few other people in town who you know don't want to wear masks and won't anyway. Uh, right now, as town moderator, um, if, it, if we had decided that we wanted, after we held, if we were to hold the election on March 9th, and then um, I, there was to be a decision made about postponing for any reason uh, the, the deliberative session that can in fact be done to a later date. But certainly I would make that decision without a firm discussion and cons consent with the uh, Board of Selectmen. Now then the next option, uh, here, let me take my notes. The next one, option number two, deals with House Bill 1129. Now I've sent people the material both on 1129 as well as the summary from the New Hampshire Municipal Association. If we would implement this option, it will in fact require drive-in voting for both the election of town officers as well as for voting on the town warrant. This, of course, would have to be done at a date and time that the, the select board would have to agree, would uh, have to come up with. And so one of the things that's going to happen is if you decide to do this and then you go ahead and publicize it and put it in the warrant, because that's what you would also have to do, then that is what would have to happen. And so one of the things you always know is that you have no prediction of what the weather would be or whatever date you might wish to choose. I have a little brief summary here of House Bill 1129, just in case you are not have read it all. But please don't, don't take my summary versus reading the entire bill. But the town would be required to notify by mail every single voter in the town. 
That means a husband and a wife living in the same dwelling, the town would be responsible for drafting up the entire procedures with the use of uh, with with an attorney, and then print these all out, fold them all up, stuff them in envelopes, and mail them out to every single voter. They would also, the town would be required to hold two virtual meetings seven days apart. The first meeting would require a, a discussion with the public about whether or not what all the procedures were going to be, and then could start discussion on all the warrant articles. And then the town would have to accept by email, voicemail, text messages, or any electronic means such as a fax any input that the public might have on both the procedures as well as every article on the warrant. And then the final warrant article would have to be made publicly publicly through electronic means. And then people would use drive-through voting and they would have to get two separate ballots. One ballot would be for the warrant articles and the other ballot would be for town officials. Now, Voters must also would be given a chance on that ballot of the warrant. Article number one on that warrant, or the first first one on that warrant, would actually be to see whether or not they wanted to, whether they would approve of the procedures. If for some reason the voters chose not to accept the procedures on the warrant on that warrant ballot, then that would invalidate and defeat every article on the warrant. You see all the funnel House Bill 1129 is going to bring you. So I, I've got a list of things that I think you need to take some serious consideration of. And I apologize if there's any redundancy because I was speaking a little off my notes. If the decision is to be made to go with House Bill 29, 1129, then with the resources of the town council, the town would have to prepare and describing all the procedures, dates, and times to be used at the conduct of the annual meeting election, then they would have to print out probably at least 3,000 copies, and then would be ready to be mail these to every single registered voter. And I'm sure that that uh, full description of that and everything that could not be done on a single page. So it would make be quite a cost and, and a lot of man hours used, no question. Not only that, but if we ended up doing that, you have the drive through voting and we have to worry about, uh, of course, our select board. We have all those other town officials that would have to be out in the open. If we had drive through voting, we probably would not be able to use our AccuVote machine. Um, and again, there would have to be two separate ballots. Um, let's see. Also, if you were to delay uh, the town meeting, and you could do that using House Bill 1129, uh, then you'd have to make a decision on, you know, whether it's gonna be April, May, June, July, whatever. Um, and the other thing is, of course, we know the history of the March weather. We've had those blizzards. Could you imagine trying to do drive-through voting in March? You know what happened in May at the school district meeting with the snow and the blowing winds. Uh, in summary, um, pretty much at this point, I know that uh, Catherine, Helen, and I've also talked to Cindy, we all support of just using March 9th and the 13th and scheduling town meeting at the high school. I will also tell you that I had a uh, discussion with Rob Barry the facilities manager, and he is sure that we can make it work no matter what we do, including covering the whole gym floor for each event. Anybody have any questions? Catherine, Helen, do you have any input? Uh, we did, and we uh, compiled those with Mr. Mitchell, and I think he's articulated fairly well. I guess the only thing I would add as a uh, reassurance to the recommendation before you is during what I would call a very robust day of voting uh, in the presidential, um, one of the common themes I heard when we used the whole gym from people who came in with their masks is that they thanked us and they felt safe. And I don't know if, Joe, you heard that as well that day, but if we could do that with that many voters, I'm confident um, with Chuck and others involved that we can provide the same level of confidence in March for our regular election with such smaller numbers. 
and maximizing the uses of the gym, the whole square footage. Again, I think we can accommodate the numbers. If the select board were to say now that we had some large bond article or warrant article coming forward, we might have a different recommendation. Um, but with that not being uh, forecasted, again, I think we can with confidence provide the same safety that we provided this past November. Do you have anything to add, Catherine? Uh, no. Uh, like I said, the three of us conferred and Chuck has said it all. I, I think um, I got permission Monday night for us to have unmasked people in the school in a corner of the gym and it's all come together. Okay, thank you. Then, Selectman Scanlon, what do you think? No, I, I'm uh, very confident. Uh, I want to thank uh, the uh, Chuck and Ellen, Catherine for uh, you know going over this uh, so so well. Um, I think you know your recommendations. I'm standing behind them. Thank you. Selectman Constantino. I bow to the experts on this. Last year there was uh, it was even more scarier. I think because it was uh, a large event. Helen's right. It was done meticulously. It uh, flawlessly, actually flawlessly. It was. Uh, we had a lot of great comments on it. Uh, I bow to expertise and go with the recommendations of uh, the three of them. Thank you, Selectman Fogg. I'm fine with their plan. Selectman Pyro. Uh, I thank them for their hard work. My only concern is by having unmasked people indoors, everything you hear is unmasked people indoors for 10 minutes. They're going to be indoors for longer than 10 minutes. And the ventilation system, how is that going to work? So uh, if I could, the prolonged exposure is within six feet. Uh, for greater than 15 minutes or a cumulative of 15 minutes. And we'll be assured to rope off an area that will keep them away from masked voters um, greater than a six foot distance. And they'll have an entrance that's separate and distinct from the rest of the individuals in the room. Um, the other thing I think that we should all be mindful of is the phase 1B initiative moving forward on behalf of the state and the governor's leadership that people who are 65 or older are being offered the opportunity to vaccinate starting Friday as well as people with two comorbidities. So our most highest risk citizens are gonna be afforded that access and likely have that vaccination, including the second shot in the series before we vote in March. Um, I just I felt that that would uh, help allay those concerns, but I can assure you I'm, I'm very adept in the CDC guidelines regarding COVID-19 at this point. Thank you, Thank you um, very much, could, Ellen. Yes. If I could just add that um, as far as the election goes, uh, the state, and I double checked this today with uh, higher authorities, they are still allowing people to use uh, the, the handy, excuse me, the uh, the status of get to be able to get a, a, an absentee ballot. If you're concerned about the uh, the number of people, you know, when we had 1,500 voters on, in November and we only had 10 people show up that didn't want to put on a mask, I am sure that at a town meeting where we might have, especially this year with no major items on the warrant, I'm sure we can accommodate a few people in the back of the gym and space them out at least 10 feet apart and to make sure that they enter the building and leave the building and we can double rope off the area. So if the only ones that they're gonna come in contact with are gonna be fellow non-mask wearers, I think we can accommodate this very safely. Okay, thank you very much, Chuck, and thank you very much, everybody. At this time, I would make a motion that we proceed to move forward with the voting on March 3rd and the town deliberative section, session on March 9th uh, in accordance with... It's the 9th, 9th and the 13th. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, let me start again. <laughs> I would make a motion that we proceed to have the town voting on March 9th and the town deliberative session on March 13th in accordance with Mr. Mitchell's guidelines. Is there a second? 
five seconds. Second. Okay. <laughs> we have lots of seconds. Uh, is there any other things that we haven't heard so far? Okay, seeing none. Roll call vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. Scanlon. Aye. Constantino. Constantino, yes. Fog, yes. Jessamine is a yes. Pyra. Pyra, yes. The motion passes unanimously. We will be voting and deliberating. And thank you, thank Mr. You, Mitchell. Thank you. And Catherine and Helen, very much for all your help. I would like to suggest that I would get together with the select board and uh, try to make sure that we can put up a time in which we can make this information public. I don't think we have to rush it right now. Um, we'll, it'll be in a timely manner that'll, so we can put it up on the website and that we can also put it up in additional places on social media. Um, and I will make sure that uh, I get together with, uh, again, my assistant moderators and we will uh, have a complete plan in place. And I'll be glad to share that with uh, the select board well before the election as I'm sure I'm going to get be getting together with you uh, before the election anyway when it comes to discussing the warrant and other things. About two weeks from tonight, Chuck. Sounds good. Okay. I'm sure I'll be putting you on the uh, on the agenda. Is there anything else? Just be well, everyone. It's nice to see your faces. <laughs> good to see you guys, too. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there any other business to come before the Selectman Pyra? No, no, I was waving goodbye. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, is there any other business to come before the Selectman in a public session this evening? Hearing none. The time being 6.17 uh, p.m. I'd like to make a motion to move into non-public session per RSA 91-A, semicolon three, paragraph two A, the dismissal, promotion, or compensation of any public employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against them, unless the employee affected has a right to a public hearing and request that meeting to be open in which case the request shall be granted. We expect to be back into public session at approximately 8.30. Is there a second? Constantino, second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call Jeff. vote. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Selectman Scanlon. Selectman Scanlon. He's trying to say yes. Okay, good enough. Selectman Constantino. Constantino, yes. Selectman Fogg. Selectman Fogg, yes. And is it a different uh, link or are we staying here because my internet is so slow it may take me a while to get in? We Are we switching over, Tim? Uh, I don't know what Jeannie had planned. Uh, she's muted. Right now, Tim. Um, I wonder. I mean, can we can we stay on this? And uh, I can lock the meeting for you so that no one can get in the meeting. I can do that. Okay. Yeah, let's okay. do that so that we can protect his internet. All okay. Right. So what I what I would recommend is that you, maybe you turn your cameras off. Uh, well, I'll stop the recording. That's what I'll do. I'll stop the recording. I'll lock the meeting. There you go. Okay. So like the jet. Select the so, Jessamine. We have a uh, motion and we're in the middle of voting here. Select the Jessamine, yes. Select the uh, Pyra. Pyra, yes. Okay, we're now going to enter into non public session. Tim, if you could stop the recording. As this Tim. conference will now be recorded. Yeah, good evening once again. The time being 8 30. I would like to seal the minutes of the non public session. Uh, of January 24th, 2021, because the reasons justifying the need for the non-public session still remain. Is there a second? I have a second. 
have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Scanlon? Aye. Constantino? Constantino, aye. Aye, yes. Oh. Jessamine, yes. Pyro. Okay. Uh, if there's no other business to come before us this evening, Joe's John. Got, John's got some. Um, oh. do, do we have an um, announcement for temporary? Oh, yeah. Interim. Uh, I'd like to make an announcement that the board of selected has appointed Brian Martin. Uh, of the Tilton Police Department to be the interim chief until such time as um, somebody qualified uh, takes his place. Beginning February 1st. Uh, beginning on uh, February 1st. Second. And that's it. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn at 8.32. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. The motion's non-debatable. Roll call vote. Everyone in favor signify by saying aye. Scanlon is an aye. aye. Constantino. Aye. Aye, uh, yes. Uh, Jessamine, yes. Pyra. Pyra, yes. And biddy biddy, that's all, folks. See you the next time. Thanks. Bye. Good job, Joe. <laughs>